Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. You're very welcome today to our Mass. We're going to take a break from baptizing today. We've been baptizing for three weeks in a row, so we're going to take a break from baptizing this morning. So could I invite the children to come forward for their liturgy of the word? So let's ask God's blessing now on the children today as they go to celebrate their own liturgy of the word. Loving Father, we ask your blessing on the children now. We ask you to enable them to hear your word today in faith, that they might grow in faith. And we make this prayer through Christ our Lord. we hear the words of Jesus in the Gospel today, Come to me, all you who labour and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. So we gather today to rest in the Lord. As we celebrate his love for us, we hear his word and receive him in the Eucharist. He tells us our yoke is easy and our burden light. So we ask the Lord for the grace to bear our burdens, relying on his grace and his help. So let's reflect for a moment on our burdens, whatever they might be. We ask the Lord to make our burdens light, as we trust in his love and his care and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
reading from the prophet Zechariah. The Lord says this, Rejoice heart and soul, daughter of Zion. Shout with gladness, daughter of Jerusalem. See now your king comes to you. He is victorious, he is triumphant, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. He will banish chariots from Ephraim and horses from Jerusalem. The bow of war will be banished. He will proclaim peace for the nations. His empire shall stretch from sea to sea, from the river to the ends of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. necessity for us to obey our unspiritual souls or to live unspiritual lives. 
If you do live in that way, you are doomed to die. But if by the Spirit you put an end to the misdeeds of the body, you will live. This is the word of the Lord. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and of earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever, and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what it pleased you to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. see from the front of the news that of this Sunday the final figure for the bicycle ride to Lourdes in May. Between the donations and the gift-aided contributions, the final total is about £12,000. So I'd like to thank everybody for their generosity. It really has enabled a lot of things to take place. On Tuesday, 11 young people will leave to go to Australia. They will spend a week in Melbourne and a week in Sydney. And the money raised has really topped up their fundraising and enabled them to go. It will be a great festival of faith and they will have teaching of various kinds on the faith. They'll celebrate Mass with the Pope and have an overnight vigil, as well as having lots of fun as well. I'm sure they'll have fun along the way. But it's a wonderful um, <coughs> time for them. And I think a great act of witness and solidarity by us as a community towards them a way of supporting them and encouraging them. Along with that, there is a, a simultaneous 
Youth Festival in Lewis at the same time as the World Youth Event in Australia, and happily we were able to send 10 young people to that um, celebration in Lourdes a few days after the, what the others go to um, Australia. They will be part of a group of about 32 from um, Southampton, Winchester and the general surrounding areas. So happily we are able to send 10 along with that and we still have some money left over which is very good. Yesterday I was on the Isle of Wight and we have 25 confirmation candidates on retreat on the Isle of Wight this weekend and they're with the Brabham Day community and they made a particular point the Brabham Day community members of saying that the young people from our area were a credit to their parents and their communities from which they came which was very nice to hear because at a time like this we hear lots of bad news about young people sort of um, stabbings and people being, young people being killed and all of that on the streets nice to hear something positive and something good that's happening. So I think as a result of your generosity, little things happening that are encouraging, hopefully we can do more for our young people because I think we really do need to offer our support in every way we can. And these two great events, Lourdes and Sydney, will be a tremendous experience for the young people and I think experiences they will long remember. Sometimes we wonder when we look at the world and perhaps when we ponder problems in our lives, even challenging pastoral problems, where is God? Is God at work in the situation at all or has God abandoned us? So it's nice to be reminded that God is actually working discreetly in every human situation. Sometimes we can look at the world and see the famines and wars and say, why doesn't God intervene in a very spectacular way and sort it all out? The readings today remind us that that's not exactly how God works. The first reading talked to us about a king who would introduce a time of peace and eradicate war forever. But this king doesn't arrive in spectacular style on a jumbo jet or on a horse even. He arrives on a donkey. And it does take our minds to Palm Sunday Jesus on that road from Bethphage into Jerusalem and everybody singing Hosanna to the King of Kings. And it's an insight into God working humbly and discreetly, not spectacularly. Again the Gospel reminds us of the same thing. Jesus thanking the Father for hiding the mysteries of the Kingdom from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Not that he's criticizing or downplaying intellectual power, but what he's criticizing perhaps is any kind of arrogance, and he's upholding the mindset of a child who can accept the workings of God discreetly and quietly and humbly. Come to me, all you who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you a rest. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The oak was placed on the shoulders of an ox. And often the oak was made of wood. So if the oak was made of wood, it would have to fit the animal on which the oak was placed. If the oak was too big, it wouldn't work. Or if the oak was too small, it wouldn't work. It's an interesting thought that the oak, or the burden on our shoulders, is a oak that's made to fit made to fit ourselves, not too big and not too small. It's a yoke that we can carry, our burdens that are made light by the grace of God, helping us to carry our burdens. So the yoke is made for each one of us, made to fit as it were, and burdens that we can carry by the grace of God. St. Paul tells us that the Spirit has made his home in us. The Spirit of God is within us, enabling us to carry our burdens. So perhaps as we look around and as we give thanks to God for our young people and all of the good things that are happening and listening to the word of God, perhaps just to reflect on that, God not working spectacularly, but God working powerfully, yet quietly and discreetly.
Let's now stand and profess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. He is finally begotten of the Father, God in God, light in light, true God in true God, begotten of the of one being the Father, through him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became the kind of the Virgin Mary, and was the same man. As we gather in faith today, we recognize our need of God's strength and power working quietly and discreetly in our lives. And so now we present our needs and our prayers to our loving Father. Lord, help us to allow the Holy Spirit into our hearts and minds, as your apostles did. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world, and may those involved in conflict be led in a peaceful direction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in the world suffering because of lack of freedom, especially the people of Zimbabwe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for young people everywhere. May they find their way in this confused society we live in. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are sick and all those recovering in hospital at this time. We pray for them, their families and carers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those who have died and those who mourn them. We pray especially for Stuart Burns and his family, for whom this Mass is being said. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In silence we pray for these and our own intentions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask Mary, Mother of God, to join her prayers to ours as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and to our Father. Amen. Loving Father, we ask you to hear us today as we place our needs before you. Hear us now and grant our prayer through Christ our Lord.
Bless and are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, let this offering to the glory of your name purify us and bring us closer to eternal life. Grant this in the name of of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father all powerful and ever living God, we praise and thank you through Jesus Christ our Lord for your presence and action in the world. In the midst of conflict and division, we know it is you who turn our minds to thoughts of peace. Your spirit changes our hearts. Enemies begin to speak to one another. Those who are estranged join hands in friendship, and nations seek the way of peace together. Your spirit is at work when understanding puts an end to strife, when hatred is quenched by mercy, and vengeance gives way to forgiveness. For this we should never cease to thank and praise you. We join with all the choirs of heaven as they sing forever to your glory.
Lord and Might, we praise you for your Son Jesus Christ who comes in your name. He is the Word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. God our Father, we had wandered far from you, but through your Son you have brought us back. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way to one another. Therefore we celebrate the reconciliation Christ has gained for us. We ask you to sanctify these gifts by the power of your Spirit as we now fulfill your Son's command. While he was at supper, on the night before he died for us, he took bread in his hands and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, he took the cup. Again he praised you for your goodness, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. the memory of his death and resurrection, and bring you the gift you have given us, the sacrifice of reconciliation. Therefore we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with his Spirit, through our sharing in this meal, may he take away all that divides us. May this Spirit Keep us always in communion with Benedict our Pope, Christian our Bishop, with all the bishops and all your people, Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You have gathered us here around the table of your Son, in fellowship with the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and all the saints. In that new world, where the fullness of your peace will be revealed. Gather people of every race, language, and way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, the Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the
together now for the coming of God's kingdom in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, cannot be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, This is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, may we never fail to praise you for the fullness of life and salvation you give us in this Eucharist. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You might just sit down for a moment. If anybody is thinking about going to the Holy Land with our pilgrimage in October 2009, the closing date is the 20th of July. If anybody is thinking of going along, I put in your name before then. First communion program for the coming year, beginning in September. Application forms available after Mass. And also, any catechists willing to help out, there will be a meeting tomorrow evening at St. Edmund, the Confessor Church in Toronto, half past seven. The Memorial Mass for Sister San Juan will be on Wednesday evening at half past seven at St. Swithin Wells Church in Faro. And the Summer Fair will be held at St. Swithin Wells School on Friday night from six o'clock until half past eight. And I believe there are raffle tickets on sale uh, after Mass as you leave. You may have heard and seen in the media in the last couple of weeks a thing called, called street pastors in Fair Oak, who do a very good job really. Um, Eric Hyam is a street pastor and he's going to say a few words about them. Churches together in Eastleigh are hoping to do something like that here in Eastleigh, perhaps beginning in September in the coming year. They've made a significant impact. Um, Eric can give us more of a feeling as to what they actually do. But they go out on the streets, particularly on a Friday night, just there to help and assist anybody in any kind of need or wanting to talk or anything like that. It would be a wonderful thing for Eastleigh if we could do that. Eric, you might just share a few thoughts with us and uh, perhaps we'll see where we go from there. It's on and ready to go. I don't really need to say long how far this said it's all. I said too much. But anyway, um, his father said, the street crimes in Ferrock have reduced considerably in the last four months compared to the same time last year. And it was on the front page of the Echo last Saturday. And the Echo gives credit to the street passers for stopping crime. And the street passers started about four months ago in Ferrock. Chief Inspector Diana Boyle is, is very keen and she says that the street passes as the best initiative she's witnessed in the 23 years that she's been in the police force. It takes the churches out into the community and she's very keen that the local churches should start a street pastor scheme in Eastley too. A street pastor really is a volunteer, someone over the age of 18 with an empathy for young people on our streets. We do a 12 week training session and we cover all kinds of topics. We work in partnership with the police but we don't work for the police. Our role is very much that of the Good Samaritan. We do not go out to preach to people but having said that it is strange how many people talk to us about questions about God. We are even asked to pray for some people out in the streets. We have no targets to meet, and if we make a difference to just one person, that is really a very good result. It can seem a daunting task to walk out in the streets, by the pubs and the parks, until one or two o'clock in the morning on a Friday, Friday night, but we go out once in a month in groups of four and five, and we have mobile phones with us too. We are all grandparents in my team, we're in our team, sorry, in our team. Well, on the first night we went out, being oldies, it wasn't until later we realised that we didn't have our phones with us. <laughs> and we had the choice when we realised this, do we go back to the church and pick up a phone, or do we depend on prayer and depend on God? What do we do? We, we put our trust in God and encourage <laughs> um, it. And it highlights the point that street pastors is heavily dependent on prayer. And when we go out, we're very comforted to know that there are people in the church praying for us and praying for the needs of the community. 
and it couldn't survive without prayer. And we have our jackets and our uniforms. The youngsters obviously take the mic in, there's lots of jokes. But after the initial period of the jokes and things, people do ask and talk to us about serious issues. The residents are very encouraging and they welcome what we're trying to do in Fairway. And in the last couple of months we've felt a lot more com confidence about doing this. And we're now going out in twos instead of fours. And I have a wonderful partner who looks after me and she keeps me safe. She's a grandmother, she has trouble walking any distance, she has to stop for a rest. But despite all of her problems, she still has that need to go out and do something and make a difference. And as a kind of reassurance, street pastors have been there for about five years in London and all the major cities around the country, and none of us have been hurt as yet. So that's very encouraging. If you're on the internet, start typing street pastors, and there's hundreds of stories all over that, street pastors all over the country. We're looking for people to join our prayer teams and we're looking for volunteers to be a street pastor. Between all the churches in Eastley we need about 20 people to cover a Friday night shift of once a month and if we can get 40 volunteers we can also cover Saturday. We also need an equal amount of people to join prayer teams and it's most important. We're going to have an open evening as yet, we haven't quite decided a date on that, but in August sometime. Please come and talk to me any time. Please pray for us, and especially on a Friday. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. So it was a great temptation when somebody described something like this to say, well, I know somebody exactly now who would be able to do that. And I think the thing is that we're all able to do it, really, in some way. And I think some people are, it's not ageist in any way, that people can be what we might consider elderly, even. Asians and kind of things. So do give consideration. We will hear more about it in the autumn. And uh, we probably won't do anything by way of an information evening, perhaps until maybe September or October. But do give it some thought. I think it would make a great impact in Eastley um, if there were people out in the streets at night helping people just available for anybody who's in need. Fitting in what I was saying earlier on about the whole question of young people and their needs today. So we just end in prayer for those who are to receive communion after Mass. But I invite you all to stand. We ask God to bless now those who will receive communion after Mass. Maria Camuti and Gina's mum. May God who created them enfold them in enduring love. The Son who died to redeem them, strengthen them in suffering and the Holy Spirit sustained them always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.